Okay, Shalom, Shalom, Kwam Yasha Allah, Kol Holoyim La, Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rachachachadash, double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well. That by the Spirit taught us this beautiful truth and just want to take the water to all the Akim and Akwa. That's out here sincerely keeping the law, statutes, and commandments of Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai to the best of their ability. Jachanan Nawaf, just coming at you with another quick, quick lesson. Pray that it's edifying by the Spirit. And um, just wanted to touch on evil angels. Are there evil angels? Now, you have some people that'll say, you know, you got the fallen angels, and it, which is not scriptural. Like, even this picture right here that I have up here, this is not scriptural. You're not going to see a damn Edomite woman with some wings on her back. But this is what the so-called white man have, has pushed on our people. They got everybody thinking that the Lord is some white guy, the father. They got the people thinking that his son is some white guy. They got, and, and generally they'll show you these angels with these little kids, you know what I'm saying, with their, um, you know, with the wings on their backs and their pee pee showing. So I just put in evil angels and put in images. And all you see is Edomite, Edomite drawings, Edomite, um, just look at it. You're, I haven't seen... Not one dark skin or Jake depiction of a of a um angel. Well, maybe you know what I'm saying. I mean, what, what, but this is the this is what the so-called white man push. They push. Now here you go, right here. This is what a, the little sweet white babies with the wings on their backs, with their pee pee showing. This is what the so-called white man push. But now, the whole subject of this particular um lesson that i want to put together here by the spirit is are there evil angels and you'll have some christians that'll tell you yes there are evil angels they fell to earth they rebelled against the lord and what we're about to go you know get into and prove is that's not true no angel can rebel against the lord they are created beings that do the will of you how about shimmy i was shy and we're about to get into it Okay, so this this right here is what you would call like fables or um, wives, um, wives tales or whatever. Salakia. Okay, so let's just come out of this for a hot sec, right? Let's go into the scriptures, and we're gonna touch. I'm gonna come back to Psalm 78 because that was the basis of this lesson on when I was reading and studying earlier. Okay, so um, because you really have a lot of people out here, they really don't. See, they don't understand that the Lord will create an evil angel. They don't believe that the Lord is the one that's actually out here. He could, they, don't, they don't understand that he controls evil and good. They just believe that he's good all the time. That's what the Christian church will tell you, right? Now, let me see if I can find this. Um, because the scripture goes off into believing, you know, not believing in fables, man. Yeah, this is the one I want right here. Uh, 1 Timothy 4 and 7. But refuse profane and old wives' fables and exercise thyself rather into godliness. Let me see if there's some more on that. Let me go into it. It says, A good servant of Yahweh Shai, Mashiach. That's the title on the um, NLT. If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, Thou shalt be a good minister of Yahweh Shah Mashiach, nourished up in the words of faith and good doctrine, whereunto thou hast attained. So that's what we're supposed to be into. We're supposed to be nourished up in the words of faith and good doctrine. But refuse, this is a commandment right here, but refuse profane and old wise fables and exercise thyself rather unto godliness. So you're supposed to rid yourself when when somebody is telling you that the angels are some little white babies with wings on their backs and their pee pee showing with their nakedness showing then that, that's a fable man you're supposed to not even think on that you're supposed to be like man get the hell away from me with that man you see what i'm saying so now let's get off into it because like i said again the focus on this particular lesson is are there evil angels and who created them? Right? 
Psalm 78, let's go to um, verse 49. Verse 49. I'm going to read it in the NLT as well. Let me put a little highlight on it. It says, he cast them. And this is going off into um, Egypt when um, Moses brought the children of Israel out of Egypt. And the things that was happening to the Egyptians, the Lord was doing those Egyptians dirty, man. Dirty. And that goes off into explaining as to why the Christian church keep telling everybody that the Lord loves everybody and that the Lord loves all these heathen nations. The Lord created 18 nations. All 18. As a matter of fact, that goes into the flood. So if the Lord loved everybody, why would he um, kill, kill everybody but eight people in the flood? Millions of people. He just flooded them out. But he loves everybody. This is what the Christian church will tell you. They don't reiterate that the Lord will kill you, man. And that, that's the problem with the Christian church. That's the reason why most of the prison population is Christians. Because the Christian church never taught them that, hey, look. Now, they teach certain things as far as spooking you or scaring you into certain things. But they're not actually giving it to you in a, a, a natural sense of love. And how the Lord rules and how he judges. They're, they're, they don't go into that. Now, this is um Psalm 78 and 49. He cast, he cast upon them the fierceness of his anger. So the Lord has anger, right? And his righteous anger. Wrath and indignation. And trouble by sending evil angels among them. So now we know that there are evil angels and who's the one that sent them? The Lord. So the Lord has an arsenal of hosts that are evil angels, man. And the NLT over here says, he loosed on them his fierce anger, all his fury, rage, and hostility. He dispatched against them a band of destroying angels. See that? So when you go into this, matter of fact, let me go into it. There's some, um, let's get some precepts on it. Because it's by sending. Let's go to the by sending part. Now, this right here is one of my, one of my favorite scriptures as well. First Kings 22 and 21. Because when you go into this, what the Lord, he sent. The Lord actually set this guy a hob up. Matter of fact, you know what? Let's just go into it. Let me come out of here and just go into it, right? Let's go into 1 Kings. Let's start at verse 19. 1 Kings 22 and 19, and it reads. See, what you're going to learn is the Christian church hasn't been teaching the scriptures right. They got everybody out here thinking like, oh, well, I can fuck up. I can do this. I can do that. But the Lord, he still loves me. And the Lord, he, he fulfilled the law. I'm good to go. I can just rob banks. I can kill people. I can commit adultery. I can do all these things. And the Lord has already died for it. So why not? And, and um, the brother um, down in South Carolina, SC7, I think is his um, channel. He done a video a few weeks back with a chick on there talking to Saint. She was like, oh, wait, well, you might as well say you're tricking you. You should be sinning because the Lord, he died for you to sin. Just weirdness, man. OK, so this is first Kings 22. Start at 19. And he said, hear thou, therefore, the word of Yahweh. I saw Yahweh sitting on his throne and all the hosts of heaven. See, all the hosts of heaven. That means wicked and the, the evil angels and the good angels i saw all the hosts of heaven standing by him on the right hand and on his left hand on his left right so now let's go into uh salakia we're gonna come back to this real quick i'm gonna come back to that right there ecclesiasticus 33 also known as the book of Sirach. now what we're about to see is the lord he created two and twos right ecclesiasticus 33 and 14 good is set against evil 
and life against death, so is the godly against the sinner and the sinner against the godly. This is the point, verse 15. So look upon all the works of the Most High, and there are two and two, one against another, right? So the Lord created everything in twos, good, bad, up, down, calm, erratic, dry, wet, sun, moon, ground, sky, male, female, you know, humble, proud, you know, positive, negative. Everything has a complete opposite, right? So now, you know what, let me, let's go and get another scripture and I'll come back to this first Kings because we have to set it up. Slock you. We have, we, we have to set it up because a false balance. Let's get that. Let's get a false balance. False balance is an abomination to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. Proverbs 11 and 1. A false balance is abomination to Yahweh, but a just weight is, is his delight. Proverbs 20 and 23. Divers weights are an abomination unto Yahweh, and a false balance is not good. So the Lord, he created a balance. Oh, it's a lock here. Yeah, I'm out here and, um. Oh, wow. Kind of stuck out here in the rain. It's, um, severe storms today. I'm kind of stashed out in the car. I'm stuck here for a while, so figure I might as well do a lesson. So if you're hearing any, um, rainfall, it's, it's, it's raining pretty hard, so. Just bear with me. Okay, but as you can see, a false balance is, is not right with the Lord. You see what I'm saying? So he created good and evil. He created wicked angels or evil angels, and he created good angels. He created good people. He created wicked people. You see? And the so-called white man is the wicked that the Bible speaks of. You're not going to get around it. All the way through the scriptures. And that's another lesson. But if you go into Job 9 and 24, it's other scriptures that you can pull. And it, it's going to show you that the so-called white man is the wicked that the Bible speaks of. He created Jacob, a righteous, a righteous people. He created Esau, a wicked people. And that's pretty much overall what the whole scriptures is about. That fight between those twins of Isaac and Rebekah, the wicked and the good. You see? Okay, so now. Let me start it back at verse 19. 1 Kings 22 and 19. And he said, Hear thou therefore the word of Yahweh. I saw the Lord Yahweh sitting on his throne and all the hosts of heaven standing by him on his right hand and on his left. And he and the Lord Yahweh said, Who shall persuade Ahab that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Galead? And one said on this manner, and another said on this on that manner. So the Lord is having counsel with, with the, um, the angels that he created. And there came forth the spirit and stood before Yahweh and said, I will persuade him. And Yahweh said unto him, wherewith? So the Lord is asking him, how are you going to do it? And he said, I will go forth and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And he said, thou shalt persuade him and prevail also. Go forth and do so. So when was the last time you heard in the Christian church a sermon coming from Creflo Dollar, T.D. Jakes, Joel Osteen, your um, Leroy, Dr. Leroy Thompson's. And when was the last time they showed you that the Lord would set your ass up to be killed? When have you heard these, these, these pastors Say, yeah, the Lord is in control of lying spirits. You're not going to hear it. What they're going to give you is the Lord is good all the time. They play the organ and they pass the collection plate. See, and you, you have to beware of these. The Lord calls them um, greedy dogs in the scriptures, man. Matter of fact, let's go into that. So 
Lucky. Um, Isaiah. You know what? Let me go back. Let me um just type it in real quick. Isaiah 56 and 11. Matter of fact, I start at verse 10. His watchmen are blind. They are all ignorant. They are all dumb dogs. They cannot bark, sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. Yea, they are greedy dogs which can never have enough. And they are shepherds that cannot understand. They all look to their own way. Every one for his gain from his quarter. Now, how many, and, and this is a greedy dog. They, they're not going to bark. They're not going to give you warning that a nigga climbing through the window to rob your house. You got that dog, he just, that Labrador, he's just sitting up on his cushion. That nice little cushion he's playing with his ducky. You know, he's got that bone that you bought from Walmart. And he's not going to alert you to somebody that's actually breaking into the home, right? That's the same thing with these Christian pastors. They're not going to tell you that World War III is on the brink, that we're in the last days, that the, um, that this so-called white man want to put a damn grain of rice in you. He want to put that C-hip in you, that MOTB. He's not going to tell you none of those things. He's not going to do it. He's not going to tell the LGBTQ, hey, you better stop what you're doing because that jungle pox is going to kill your ass. I'm not gonna tell you that. They get that 501c3 charter, and there's certain things that they can't talk about, right? But again, like I said, this, you know, the lesson is geared towards are there evil angels? So now let's go back to Ecclesiasticus 39 and 28. And they're all spirits. The book of Sirach 39, verse 28, there be spirits that are created for vengeance. And, and um, this book, Ecclesiasticus, is, is known as the book of Sirach as well. It's, it's actually close to Ecclesiastes and the 66 books, but this is the Apocrypha. And it's also called the book of Sirach to kind of separate it. Ecclesiasticus 39, 28. There be spirits that are created for vengeance, which in their fury lay on sore strokes. In the time of destruction, they power off their force and appease the wrath of him that made them. So the Lord created spirits for vengeance. Right? Fire and hell and famine and death. All these were created for vengeance. So these are spirits. Fire is a spirit. Hell, famine and death. All those are spirits. Teeth of wild beasts and scorpions and serpents and the sword punishing the wicked to destruction. They shall rejoice in his commandment. So you got Satan, all these wicked angels, the evil angels. They rejoice in getting a commandment from Yahweh Bashem Yahweh to kill people or to wound them. Some people, you know, land in a wheelchair, get, you know, paralyzed and they can... The eight eight day in a living hell. He got Playboy. He used to be a Playboy. You know, all the women was on him. Then the Lord put his ass in a wheelchair. He can't even use his rod no more. That's hell. That's a that's a spirit of vengeance. See what I'm saying? Teeth of wild beasts and scorpions and serpents and the sword, punishing the wicked to destruction. They shall rejoice in his commandment. And they shall be ready upon earth when need is. And when their time is come, they shall not transgress his word. So, where is it in the scriptures where Satan, he came up against the Lord. They had this fight. And all of a sudden, you know, the Lord just kicked him out of heaven. Like, like Satan can go against the Lord. We, I've clearly pulled... A few scriptures that let you know that the Lord is in control of Satan and the evil angels and the spirits, man. Satan can't just, matter of fact, you know what? Let's go back into the um, blue letter. Let's go into the blue letter real quick.
Let's go back into um, Psalm 78. And I'm going to pull this precept with Job. Psalm 78, 49 again. Let's pull this precept with Job real quick. Because Satan couldn't just do what he wanted to do to Job. He got instructions from the Lord as to what he could do and what he couldn't do. If it was up to Satan, the whole earth would be destroyed. When you really think about it. If he really had power, now he's doing his job. That's all he's doing. He's an employee of Yahweh by Shimei Shai. He's doing his job, and that's it. But like I said, again, the whole purpose of this lesson is to show that there are evil angels. Um, Job 1 and 12 right here. And Yahweh said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power, only upon himself put not forth thy hand. Why didn't Satan say, Oh, forget that, Lord. I'm going to put my hands on him. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord, right? Job 2 and 6. And Yahweh said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thy hand, but save his life. So, so went Satan forth from the presence of Yahweh and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot unto his crown. He could only do what Yahweh by Shimei Abishai allowed him to do or told him to do. He couldn't just go and kill Job. Cause when you when you matter of fact, let me go into this a little further. Let's get a few more. Um, let's move in, into it a little bit. Let me start at um, verse eight. And Yahweh said unto Satan, "Has thou considered my servant Job?" So the Lord is actually representing Job. Like, hey, look, that's my dude right there. I know what he's gonna do. That there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man and an upright man, one that feareth Yahweh and escheweth evil. Then Satan answered the Lord. He answered Yahweh and said, Do with Job fear Yahweh for naught? So he like, look, with all the stuff you gave him, of course he's gonna love you, or of course he's gonna fear you. Has not thou made a hedge about him and about his house? And about all that he had on every side, thou hast blessed the work of his hands and his substance is increased in the land. So what does that have to do with anything? Couldn't Satan have just gone through and wrecked Job without the Lord's permission? He can't do nothing. He can't do nothing other than what Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai assigned him to do. Because he got an assignment from the Lord. As to what to do and what he couldn't do. And he couldn't go no further. He couldn't go past the boundary. It's that simple, man. So, I just wanted to just bring out a lesson on um, on this. Because I was reading it. And you had the Christian church, man. They push this crap that the Lord, he loves everything. He loves everybody. Oh, you can do whatever you want. Don't worry about it. He, he the, the, He's already died for your sins. You can go and do whatever you want to do. And so many people are going to be destroyed from these greedy dogs that's called pastors, man. Telling the people you can eat pork, shrimp, crab, and lobster. Now they out here with diabetes, fat as hell, obese, and, and, and just with all kinds of, just can't even stuff in itself in an SUV, man. The fucking truck leaning to one side is so big from eating all this crap. Just looking nasty. Wondering why, you know what I'm saying, they can't get a spouse. You see what I'm saying? It's lucky. Kind of here, I was trying to listen to some jazz. They, they done threw on a, the, the, the Edomite woman. And she's out here singing some of them, them old spirituals. Old Edomite spirituals. But anyway, let me go back to um, Psalms and I'm going to end out. Let's go back to Psalm 78. Look, there are evil angels. And the Lord, he sends them forth to evil niggas, man. And, and you're going to learn that. And it's coming real strong, too, real soon. It's already happening. He cast, this is um, Psalm 78 and 49. He cast upon them the fierce, and this is going, this is for the, the wicked, this is for the heathen nations. 
Because he sent these this evil angels, he sent them against the Egyptians on behalf of the Israelites. And the same thing is coming to these Egyptians in the Americas that have the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, which are the Hebrew Israelites in their grasp right now. That's why you start to see so much craziness going on right now, man. He cast upon them the fierceness of his anger, wrath, and indignation, and trouble by sending evil angels among them, man. And he's going to keep on hardening these so-called white people heart because they're not going to let the Israelites go. They'll tell you that you're free in this country, but you have to have their credentials to actually leave here and come back or go anywhere. As soon as you get to where you're going, they're going to be like, oh, your passport, license, um, identification. Which slave owner do you belong to? Basically is what they're asking you. You niggas can't just leave here. And he's not going to allow you to go just like Pharaoh wouldn't allow the, the, the Israelites to leave um, Egypt, man, until the Lord put them plagues on his ass, man. And then hardened his heart where he followed them and got drowned in the Red Sea. And not to mention he killed off their firstborn. So where is this I love, the Lord loves everybody at? Because if he loved everybody, he would have just said, hey, Moses, Aaron, go into Egypt and tell Pharaoh, and, and, and you know, all the people come on along and, and I'm just going to give them the law, statutes, and commandments, and they're going to, you know, I, I, I have a whole plan for them. No, he didn't want nothing to do with no damn Egyptians, man. He sent Aaron and Moses into Egypt to get the Israelites out. And that's something that you, you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans better learn, man. Because you're going to be destroyed along with this man in his kingdom if you don't repent. And that's the bottom line. Like, straight up. So I just wanted to just put this out there that there are evil angels. And those evil angels are about to, they're destroying America right now as we speak. And all these European nations. Esau Edom, the so-called white man's kingdom, is falling, man. Straight up. So with that, I pray that the lesson was edifying. Quam Yashallah.